So uh, Lord Table 16, the agenda is to run through uh, Frontless House, which has um, launched in the last 48 hours, uh, have a look at Aeternum, have a look at Loot Survivor, um, a quick call to join a council, and um, then we will have a look at the uh, the should be closed but is now extended um, Duck Realms Artist in Residence Creator Challenge. Before we uh, get into the first topic, a reminder on what the DAO is and what it does. So the DAO's mission, the Rithika DAO's mission is to terraform an open, expandable and eternal autonomous world. We're thinking about realms as a network, uh, a parallel being the Ethereum network where many teams build on top of this shared substrate and the network acts as like a public good. It's open, it's transparent, successful at all times by everyone. And the network or the DAO will support projects and teams, indies, you know, potentially companies who wish to um, come along and deploy games or extend games or add tools or experiences to the ecosystem. And yeah, the mission was obviously to fill the, 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 the realm's world with enjoyable games and experiences. Technology-wise, I think that many of you are aware that we are StarkNet OGs at this point, two years in. Um, there aren't many projects that um, have uh, contributed as much and been as active in the ecosystem as we have. And our future, or well, the realm's world future, is on StarkNet. Um, as an L2, but in future uh, as an L3. And we are building fully on-chain games, so where state and logic and items are on-chain. We're integrating AI into our workflow and into our gameplay and, and our community as, as where, where, where we can. Um, and we've been pushing that, I guess, again, you know, pioneering that from, from a relatively early stage of the DAO's um, lifespan. Um, we are building a dev and creative network. We're, we're, we're strong from that perspective. We're building in the open. Everything we do is open source. And we both contribute and to and use the Dojo stack. And that gives us significant advantages as, a, as an ecosystem that's part of a broader um, you know, world of, of on-chain games. It means that composability between games inside of our network and composability between games in, in other autonomous worlds is, is more of a thing. Uh, shared infrastructure, shared maintenance, you know, shared audits, it really takes a lot of the burden of, of developing a, a game engine off of the DAO and allows us to focus more on the, the app layer um, and creating great, great gaming experiences. Uh, we're very active in terms of innovation to get across tech, UX, game design, AI integration in the on-chain gaming space. So I'll hand over to Calc. Calc will talk us through the latest on Frontinus House. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I, I just, I'll just click along when you say yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, go for it. Okay. Um, yeah, so quick update on Frontless House and all things grants. Um, I went with a neon theme on this one, so chilky day. Um, what I'm just going to give a quick update on is how the Genesis round went. Um, as you all probably know, we hosted the first uh, um, Frontless House grant uh, a couple of weeks. It finished. Um, yeah. Quick update on that. Um, quick update on who won it. Um, a bit of a TLDR on Frontless House and the system process protocol that we're building out. Um, what's next? And a little intro with Matt Farrow and the uh, great guys who've been building out the uh, Frontless House with us. So yeah, if you want to go to the next one. Fun mate. Um, yeah, so the genesis of Frontless House. So this is the first um, Frontless House round we've done. So TLDR on Frontless House, it's a way for us to give out our treasury to those within the ecosystem that are trying to build out this autonomous world. 
the is the whole aim of the project. Um, so how did it go? Um, one, it went well, I think. Um, <laughs> we've funded eight games, one piece of infrastructure, and one marketing project. Um, I'll give a bit more information on the next slide about them. But oh, oh wait, no, that wasn't a that wasn't a go. <laughs> um, yeah, it taught uh, this first Genesis round. Um, essentially, it was it's not so much a test, but um, it was kind of a a mucky. Let's fund some guys and get make some learnings from it. Um, so I think it's gave us some clear objectives. A few learnings about how payment structure will work and a bit of a more of an idea about how theming these further rounds will go. Um, but yeah, I think it's gave us some good learnings. Um, but yeah, on next one. Oh, also, shout out to Palomato for doing a uh, swift bip mid midway through the round to increase it from 5 to 10. I think everyone's quite happy with that. But yeah. Uh, next one. Um, so in the projects we funded, so as I say, eight games, one infrastructure, and one marketing project. Um, I'll, I guess I'll read them out. So Loot Underworld, um, a game by Reciprocer and Matalion. Um Actually, I won't read every single one out. It's going to take me ten minutes. But yeah, <laughs> uh, InstaSwap, um, an AMM built for like various different um, ERC types. Um, a few projects like Kist that um, are building out um, primitives for games by Nick Bar. Yeah, I've used it. Um, and yeah, Rise and Revenant by Grogan. Uh, I won't go on too much, but yeah, um, really, really great projects. They've all um, started going in some regard now, and Hopefully, over the next month or two or three or four or five, we'll start seeing some of these come to fruition. Um, obviously, not quite early at this point, so don't expect a game right now. But um, yeah, uh, I've just clicked off. Um, I've created a little notion that you can see in the bottom there. I'll link it in Discord for everyone. Um, oh. But it's just a word we'll use to track and give a bit of information about each project, who's running it, when they're at, when they're up to. Um, everyone's also got their own Discord channel now. Um, if they don't, some like Crips and Caverns don't, you'll be able to see some form of contact there. Like They'll have their own Discord. So yeah, if you guys can't see a channel for those and you want to see what's happening with them, click on into the Notion page. Um, there'll be some form of contact or some update or some information there for you. But yeah, as I've just come into the Discord, if you have questions, someone will answer. But yeah, uh, next one. So yeah, that was the Genesis grant. Uh, and big news over the past day, Frontless House has launched. The actual protocol slash system slash process um, Helped out by the meta, well, helped out, created by the Metaphor guys, with a bit of help from us. Um, what what Frontless House is? So the idea of Frontless House is um, a way to get consensus in the DAO and fund people and give people money. Um, kind of already covered that bit, but um, what it will be used moving forward um, for funding rounds. So similar to what we just. Um, completed in the Genesis grant. Um, sell BIPs or Bibliotheca DAO improvement proposals, aka methods of funding. Um, it's got a cool little function that's enabling delegation. So we'll be able to delegate your stake. So if you're not as active of a contributor or voter, um, you can give that voting power to someone that you trust and they can vote on your behalf. Um, and general consensus is the idea. If we ever have a debate or we need to move anything, um, we now have a way and a simpler way, especially with delegation, to try and kind of um, get that consensus within a DAO. Um, and I think it will be very, very helpful long term, especially as uh, protocols ossify and whatnot. Um, yeah, so call to action is 
go on to Frontless House, have a play around with it, have a look, especially if you're a Realms NFT holder. Um, log in. If you, you have any feedback, drop into the Frontless chat channels. And uh, yeah, someone will pick it up and have a chat with you and let's talk. Um, special thanks to Bu and Yao and the whole Metaphoro guys. They've done like 99% of the work on this. Um, so if you want to give any thanks to anyone, give a big old hug to them and say, well done. Uh, yeah. Uh, so next slide. Uh, so what is next? Um, delegation. So as I already mentioned then, is um, from this house now enables delegation. So <clears throat> I'll put a link in the chat now. Um, of course, if you just go to, if you're looking at this on a recording, just type frontinus.house and it'll be the only thing you can see pretty much. Um, as of right now, we have a delegation round running. So what that is, is um, it'll last for a week and people will be able to propose themselves as delegates. So it's not you delegating your stake at this point. It's simply you proposing that I'll take on some voting power. Um, super appreciate anyone who does this. Um, I'll, everyone in the DAO will love you forever. Um, but you have a week to submit this. I believe it's the, so it started today. So the deadline is the 28th. Um, so you'll have one week as of today to put your name in the hat. Um, it's no pressure um, type thing. Just put your name in, don't worry about it. Um, if you want to uh, help out with the DAO, it is 100% appreciated by everyone involved. Um, this will help us being more uh, flexible, malleable as a DAO and be able to pass quorums far easier, especially if, uh, yeah, if we start spamming out some bips that I think will be happening. Um, after that, <coughs> um, personally at least, um, I plan to try and push forward in the next round of Frontless House. Um, now this will be using the actual Frontless.house protocol. Um, what that next round will be is totally up to us um what we the aims of that round again is totally up to us it's not at a bit stage yet it's literally in the idealization uh brainstormy types stage so if you have an idea if you want to have a chat about it come to the frontness chat um area and yeah uh talk um any feedback any ideas even if you have a project that you want to do, um, ping it in there, and then maybe we'll fashion the round towards whatever the hell you're building. But yeah, highly recommend it. Um, for in this house talk, um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so 5th of September, uh, maybe I shouldn't have put the exact date, <laughs> but um, the plan is um, monthly. Um, I'm going to host a open um, open hour, half an hour, an hour um, for any frontless projects that have been funded to just have a chat, show and tell, show what they're doing, and it's earmarked from the 5th of September, um, as of right now. Now, I don't ex anticipate the first one to be um, like flowing with Alpha and Amazing stuff. Some of these projects only started like two weeks prior to that, so yeah. Temper expectations on the first one. Um, but yeah, um, we'll put it in Discord a week or so before just to confirm, and we'll have an announcement, a proper announcement about it a week or so before. Um, but yeah, highly recommend joining it for that, and maybe we'll do it in the Asia time so Ludducky can join. <laughs> Reciprocant, so we'll have loads of alpha, so it's promised now it will be chocked full of amazing stuff um <laughs> yeah last one um i don't know how long we've been speaking for secretive i feel like i've been rambling do we shove this at the end or do we go now yeah, if people want to ask questions now i think it's it's grand yeah okay just uh um hand up, I guess. Yeah, where but, is. Ooh, so first i'll get yao and Bu up so these are guys that have been building out from this house with us 
I've just invited you. I don't know if you want to say hello. Hello? Hello? Ooh. Hello. Hello. Hi. I, guess I was I was getting ready to to type my message in the chat window. Didn't know I was allowed to talk. <laughs> hey, well, Hi, uh, I'm Bill right? from Metaphor. Hello, Glad to be here today. Yeah, so these are the guys who've been doing all the hard work. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, any ideas, any feedback, just put your hand up. It's up to you. But if not, don't worry. Right. We'll be available to answer any questions you may have here in the call as well as in the future in the front is house chat channel in Discord. So don't worry if you don't have any question today. We'll be here. Wonderful. That's great. Thank you. Well, um, I think just, we all look forward to having a try. And um, I'm moving on to the next stage of, of, of decentralized operations. So, hey, thank you for uh, yeah, making that happen. And a You're shout welcome. out to, 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 to Nia Tins as well, who was part of the process in the, in the early stages. Obviously, to Calc for nurturing this whole process too. So, it's been yeah, another um, sort of DAO contributor-wide effort. So uh, thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for your support as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll do another Q&A at the end anyway for just a general one. So if anyone's got any questions, they can just ask at that point. Um, thanks, Calc. So I think that, Next, we have uh, an update on Turnum from Rochelle. Hey, GM, GM Lords. Um, so, yeah, thanks for um, letting me, letting me uh, show a bit of uh, Eternum. Um, uh, you can go on the next slide, please. Nice. Um, all right, so I'm going to talk about uh, the last updates that um, we did. Um, in September, um, but also talk about the next uh, updates that uh, are planned in the in the pipeline. Um, so for uh, September, we added uh, three new uh, features, uh, and the first one is Arcade accounts. Um, so if you've kind of followed Realms and Loaf on, on Twitter, I'm pretty sure you you know what Arcade accounts are. Um, and basically, the goal is to just be able to like deploy a new account with just signing one transaction. And then you've got this account in your browser, and you can just send transactions without having to sign anything. Um, and we really feel like this is, uh, this is like imperative to, to make an engaging game um, with, with, with blockchain. Um, so um, that's something we, we added to, uh, to Eternum. Uh, and I'm going to show all these features uh, right after uh, in the demo. Uh, yeah, by the way, so can I, I'll be able to share my screen, right? Um, yes. Yes. All right, all right cool, cool. Um, OK, so the, the next feature we added was uh, direct offers. So to give a bit of background, um, currently in Eternum, we have like a a resource harvesting system and a trading system. Um, and the current trading system was basically creating these uh, open, open orders in the markets and anybody can, could just take them. Um, but since uh, travel distance is important in the game because you, you need to transport your resources to other realms to trade, etc., uh, we added a feature to uh, specify which realm you want to trade with um, so that you know, maybe you can just trade with um, the one next to next to you, for example. Uh, and the last feature we added um, is uh, a road system. Um, so uh, the road system is basically being able to create a road uh, between your realm and another realm. And so when you trade with him, or if you travel to to that realm, uh, it, you'll get like a a huge uh, like a speed boost, basically. 
Um, and also, uh, 1337 uh, did a lot of UI polishing. So that's also kind of the things we do in parallel uh, just to improve the whole UI uh, every day. Um, and so we currently feel like you know there was a lot of work in the beginning for uh, the game uh, you know, to kind of set up the whole architecture, uh, to get used to Dojo, to kind of find out uh, the best pattern to use Dojo in the client. Uh, and we kind of feel like we reached the point where, you know, we've got a stable version of the code base and we can now like shift 100% on just launching new features. So um, so now we've got like this one week feature, um, one week feature release where, you know, we try to um, like brainstorm, create the contract, create the design and implement in the UI, like all of that, we try to do it. In, in one week, um, and that's what we've been able to do for Rhodes, uh, and we'll try to do it for the next uh, features as well. So um, I think uh, I'm expecting to to have uh, features getting released uh, faster than than, than before. Um, all right, you can go to the next slide. Um, so uh, for the next update, so what's important for now is that the current game is more like a technical demo because uh, there's no objective yet, you know, there's no competition yet. Um, and one of the things we want to add is the hyperstructure system. Um, and we've already talked about it in the past, but now we're, we're bringing it back um, and maybe in, in, in a new form. Um, and for the... the V1, basically, um, the goal is for uh, each order to have this, um, to each order to be able to uh, construct uh, their, har their hyperstructure. And that will demand like a huge amount of resources. And we can create this kind of order versus order competition um, between the players. Um, so that's going to be, you know, like uh, a nice short term objective in the game to kind of get people uh, competitive uh, between, between each other. So that's going to be, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and um, that's actually this week's uh, sprint. Uh, we'll see, we'll see if we can finish on time, but um, uh, you've already got credits uh, who finished the contracts. So that's, that's cool. And Amaro did some really cool 3D models as well. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if we can finish that um, by the end of the week, or or maybe early uh, next week. Um, the other features we're working on is a dynamic pricing for labor. Um, so in the game, you if you want to harvest resource, you need to basically hire labor on your in your mines or in your fields. Um, and this labor for now has like a fixed price. And what we want to do is kind of divide the map into different zones. And each zone has its like uh, auction system for labor. Um, so that if in a certain zone, there's like a huge demand for labor, then the price will uh, increase for all the realms in that zone. And so we think that this can this can bring some really cool features, uh, some really cool um, behaviors and and strategies as well. Um, and for those who want to kind of dive into the, the algorithm, um, we're going to use um, something developed by uh, Paradigm uh, called. Um, wait, I need to find a name. It's um, damn. Just a second. I've got it. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, right. So, um, so the name is uh, variable rates gradient Dutch auction. Uh, so that's that's something developed by Paradigm, um, and I'm just going to drop a link in the chat if you want to to check. Um, if you want to check the math behind it, it's it's not that complicated, but uh, there's some cool graphs as well. Um, and that's that's what they introduced for the art gobblers NFT mint. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was like a, an awful NFT mint a 
like a year ago. Uh, I think it kind of went to zero, but yeah, that's just to give some background. Uh, and the last feature we're working on, uh, which we'll release, um, is uh, the chat system. Um, and we kind of have some version of it working, so I'll, I'll show it in the demo as well. Um, right, so there's a new question from Palomato. Um, so how do we do order versus order if when we settle realms, it's like um, from like any order? Um, and we actually change that so that when you settle, or, like you, ch you choose an order in the beginning, and when you settle uh, an order, um, it's going to be uh, like when you settle a realm, it's going to be from that order. Um, but if I can show my screen, I can launch maybe the demo. Um, but I don't know, it seems like yep. cool. Okay. All right. I will. So if I stop streaming, then you should be able to just, just start streaming. Yeah, cool. All right. Nice. Uh, yeah, and don't hesitate to just shoot out shoot questions in the in the chat. I can I can try to answer them uh, during the meeting. Uh, all right. Screen one. Go live. Can you guys see it? All right, cool. OK, so um, I'm just going to show, show the Arcade, Arcade accounts first. Uh, so uh, you just click on here to create a new uh, Arcade account. And you're going to see the list of accounts that you've created. And you can just uh, click on Start Playing. Oops. I'm going to reduce. Can you guys hear the music, actually? Yeah, I, I, I like the music. I'll just leave it as a nice background music. Um, a, a, a little bit lower than that. It's actually coming out okay. quite low. Right. <laughs> yeah, we go. How is this? <laughs> is it good? Uh, yeah, now, now it's kind of disappeared. I think just a little, little bit more. This. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's oh, try that. That's good um, all right, so let me start with uh, setting a realm. Um, so you can just um, click on the order you want as, at first. Um, and let me take order of reach. You just wait for the transaction. There you go. You've got a new realm settled, and I'm going to settle a second one. Um, all right, nice. Um, so when you click on the realm, uh, the first thing you see is your realm view and uh, the open markets on the left. Uh, and you can kind of, kind of interact with your realm by either uh, clicking Maybe here. I think you might have to mute it. I think oh, all right. I think yeah, no worries. No worries. Thank you. Um, OK, cool. All right. Um, so you can basically manage your realm by either clicking on, um, on, the, on, the, on the 3D model, um, or you can uh, directly um, click also here on the, on the menu on the left. Uh, so I can see here that I have uh, fish. I mean, all the realms have fish and, um, and wheat. Uh, but this realm also has wood, so I'm just going to construct uh, a bit of labor for wood. Um, and you can see that it's quite fast uh, because we added something called optimistic rendering. So uh, when you send a transaction, um, the client also uh, predicts the output of the contract and will show it to you before uh, the transaction has finished. Um, so let me now try to create a trade. Um, you can see in my offers that you haven't created any. Um, so I'm going to create one. And here I can see the list of resources I have at the moment. 
Uh, for now, we just uh, give kind of like a thousand shekels, a thousand stone, and a thousand gold to each realm. But we'll change that in the future. Um, so I'm just going to change a bit of shekel against some stone and some coal. And here, uh, okay, so maybe 200 against 100, 100. Um, and that's the new feature I was talking about. So direct offers, you can see the list of realms that have already been settled. And you can uh, either do a market offer for everybody or uh, decide um, um, for like to, to select another order, uh, another realm. Uh, here, I'll just try to um, select this other one. I can filter by um, order by order or by distance. Um, and this, I think this should be emu. Let me find it. Right, that's the one. So it's 20 kilometers from my, my own realm. Oops, ah, damn, I misclicked. All right, let me just create that again. There you go, direct offer. That was the one, oops. And something else that's, in, that's important in the game is that, so you need to transport these resources to the other realm to make the trade. And to do that, you need to have a caravan of donkeys. And uh, the number of donkeys you need depends on the weight um, that, you, that you have. So here, every donkey can like uh, carry 100 kilos. So uh, 100, um, so one donkey would be enough. But if I go back and ask for and put 200 shekels, then it's going to be now 200 kilos. So I'll need two donkeys uh, to transport um, these resources. And the goal is that you know um, each realm has a limited set of donkeys. So you also need to handle that uh, in your calculation, in, in your optimizations. So I'm going to create the offer. Uh, you can see here my offer is already there. Uh, you get some notifications as well every time someone creates an offer. Um, so uh, here I'm going to go into the other realm. And I can see here in direct offer uh, that I've got the new offer from the other realm. Um, here you can see normal speed. And that's the new road feature that we added. Uh, so now you can click on here. Um, and we'll make it more, um, more obvious, because now it's not that obvious. But you can click here and build a road uh, between your realm and the other realm. So if I build a road, um, I can see in my roads here that I've got a road with the other realm. And um, I've uh, basically constructed a road with two usage. And the road system for now works in terms of uh, usage. So it's like the more you use the road, the more it degrades. So you need to construct again uh, to use it again. Um, so here, um, my direct offer, now I can see here it's going to be two times faster to travel there. So I can just accept again with also choosing uh, two donkeys here. Uh, I'm going to accept that. And if I go into, oops, yeah, my caravans here, I can see the list of caravans that I've sent uh, to other realm. And I can click on it to see uh, what their content is and how much, what resource I'm going to get. If you go into my offers, you'll also see um, the um, caravans that are coming to your realm with uh, resources for you. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for um, the current features. Oh, I've, we also get the world chat uh, kind of working. We're, we're still like testing it. But the goal is for you to be able to connect with your uh, wallet. Um, and 
for now, it's just a global chat. And I've been chatting with uh, Loaf. I don't think he's connected, but um, yeah, the goal is to have like this global chat, but also have like a chat for uh, each order. And so people will be able to uh, talk uh, strategies and collaborate together. Um, but yeah, we're, we're still we're, we're still working on the on the chat feature. Um, but yeah, so as I said, like for now, it's really cool, like technical demo. Um, but we really want to add kind of these objectives for the players. Um, and so the first one would be like um, hyperstructures, um, and yeah, try to drive some competition, some drama between. Uh, between orders, so we're, we're excited to see how, how that's going to uh, pan out. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the demo. Um, but I'm going to maybe check uh, if you guys have some questions. Um, There's a couple from Pollen on the bottom. Right. Uh, for now, you're the only one to be able to use your road. But um, we could think about having anyone use your road as well. And this is the kind of thing that will shape up as we advance in the development. Um, because um, Contract-wise, for example, with ECS, um, the way we, we develop the contract is um, for actually anybody to use that road. But in the client at the moment, we only, only let um, you use that road because the current features don't, yeah. There's still some things missing for for everybody to be able to use any roads, but um, that's the kind of features like we're we're thinking about it, um, so that you know it can open up some scenarios and some stuff that we didn't think about. Um, but yeah, maybe in the future. Uh, and also DM chat, yeah, sure, why not? Um, so um, that's something we could do as well. Um, and. Yeah, maybe maybe let people buy your shares shares in your realm and do like a friend friend tech <laughs> competition. Um, but yeah, that's also like the DM chat. I think we'll we're, we'll make that as well. Yeah. And so, Michelle, um, like looking ahead at the at the the cadence with which like new features are going to be um, like developed and and um, Kind of added to the alpha. Um, what do you? What support do you want from the community at the moment in terms of uh, play testing and participating in the in the game build? What do you really? Want? Um, well, yeah. So anybody that wants to um, to help us uh, play test the game, um, I think you can jump into the Ethereum chat uh, and maybe introduce yourself. And um, and because like we, we can give you the links there, like all the links are ca like kind of in the chat as well. Uh, but is, if there's a few people in the audience who uh, want to contribute to the playtest, uh, don't hesitate to come in the chat, introduce yourself, uh, and, and and test it there. Um, also, I see here, can caravans be rated, captured? Um, not for now, but we're also planning to, to roll that uh, in the next feature. So we're also thinking about that. There's a kind of a rolling conversation going on. Hey, thanks, Michelle. That was really great. Uh, appreciate that. And um, I'm not sure if you've ever um, had a chance to address the community before. So. Um, just give a little bit of background about yourself and what you've been like, how you've been working on Eternum for the last 
I don't know, six months, something like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I guess it's the it's actually not the first time that I talk in the Lord's table, but it was um, yeah maybe like six months ago when I was um, um, working on um, a system for the previous version of Eternum. Um, which was the result of um, a hackathon I did uh, from Matchbox DAO. Um, and we had like a kind of mercery, mercery system where a realm could hire another realm to attack another realm, basically. <laughs> um, and so we were thinking about like trying to, to make that, um, you, you know, we, we made some contracts for that. Um, but, and so I think I, I, I explained, like I, I presented that, I think, uh, in, in the Lord's table, maybe from January, maybe, or December, something like that. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. And so obviously you're somebody who's had an eye on extending out and building on the world for going back since that, that, that Matchbox Hackathon was, uh, was 2022, I think it was like yeah. August or September 2022. Yeah, it was. It was uh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, thank you for, uh, yeah, for um, for all you've shared today and for your contribution to the to the development of Eternum, and for a really great presentation. Thank you. Thanks, um, uh, and thank you for the mid journey images oh. that you <laughs> super dope. They're awesome. I really love them. So thanks. You're most welcome. All right. Um, so next up, oh, would you mind um, if you stop sharing your screen, oh, then sure. I will pass over to. Um, I'll pass over to the Loot Survivor team. Um, am I sharing? Yeah. Hello. What am I sharing there? Whoops. Okay. You were sharing the live demo briefly. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. I can't see what I'm sharing, but as long as it's the right thing, then... Uh, is currently on the yeah, yeah, there we go. There right. we go. Lovely, perfect. Okay, right, distracted. Um, so yeah, a quick introduction. So, um, we have on the line uh, distracted dev and spaghetti, um, and also loot heroes there as well. Um, three uh developers who are leading lead charge on loot survivor, fast, distracted, and spaghetti to pull together a, an update to share today. Yeah, so. Thanks a lot, uh, GM everyone. Um, so I am Distracted Dev. I work mainly on the client side of Loot Survivor, which involves UI um, indexing um, and really uh, what, what you guys see on the front end. Um, so yeah, if you go next slide, and you'll have to skip another one because there's, a, there's an animation. Oh, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so... Um, wanted to do this presentation in the style of, of Loot Survivor. Um, so I've, if, if you're familiar with the game, you've got the, the top bar there, and I've put a, a penalty of 10 minutes, because I want to try and get this presentation done in 10 minutes. So if I don't do it in 10 minutes, that barrel rog might kill me. Very good, man. Very good like that. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, summary of what Loot Survivor is. So Loot Survivor is a roguelike uh, play-to-die on-chain game. Uh, Roguelike meaning in the trend of a kind of dungeon crawler turn-based uh, game where there is some kind of permanent death um, feature to it. Um, the game is fully immutable um, and the, the target is kind of to have this fully immutable arcade game that you can keep your scores forever um, and, it, and it will kind of keep on running and everyone can play. Um, it has uh, a tie to the loot origin story and the, the whole loot uh, narrative and ecosystem, which we'll show you. Um, and the whole idea of the game is basically that you pay a small, a small fee, similar to you putting uh, tokens into an arcade machine, and that's in Lords. And the goal is to get very high up on the leaderboard so that you can start earning the Lords from other people playing. And that's split across the, the, the top three. Um, and we have a distribution mechanism for that going forward. Um, so yeah, it's ready to play on testnet at the moment, desktop and mobile. And yeah, we, we're incentivizing everyone to, to play, share your battles and scores, um, and also 
we're, we're grateful for you guys helping us out with reporting bugs on the Discord. Next slide, please. So yeah, um, if you have a phone on you, um, please feel free to scan the, the middle QR code, um, which, because we've now published on, uh, on Bravos as a DAP, will, should take you straight to, to Bravos and that app. Um, if it doesn't you, and you don't have Bravos installed, you might just have to scan the, the, the second QR code. So that's a bit of fun. Um, this will be recorded anyway, and I'm sure we'll share the slides so you can, you can use this um, after. But yeah, whenever, whenever we've had a bit of time. I've taken here a screenshot um, of the current leaderboard um, as it is to, to date. Um, so just to show who you're up against right now, and um, we've got some pretty high scores in here. Um, and yeah, really to show you as well that you can see 110 adventures have been made. And the current version of this, this contract uh, game has been up for around a week. So, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of people getting involved and playing, which is really cool to see um, as, we're, as we're gearing up for, for a release. Um, so yeah, going over some uh, gameplay strategies really and, and how the game works. Um, so at the moment you start off with a, a set of classes, uh, Merchant being one, and they give you different stat boosts. So Merchant you'll start basically with six Charisma points, which are important for buying items and purchasing gold for, for cheaper prices. Um, you have tier, so you have a bunch of items basically. And they all link back to the original loot contracts. So there's 101 of them, and they are um, separated and, and uh, into different tiers. Tier 1 being the strongest, Tier 5 being the weakest. Um, so really it's up to you from the start to decide what you're going to go for. Um, it's a plain field, so you can choose to spend your money on higher stuff or go for a cheaper gear set. But really we've been seeing what people are doing and, and how they're getting on with it. Um, and we also have jewellery, um, which is basically uh, you, you can choose to buy jewellery for extra luck bonuses, and that gives you critical hits. Um, if you get your item up to a greatness 15, you get a, a suffix, um, and that basically means like uh, an of protection, which is linked to the orders of realms. And this will essentially give you uh, a stat boost for, for based on the order that you get. Um, so there's a lot of decisions around um, what, well, the, the randomness of the stat boost that you might get and how that might affect your gameplay. Um, and really, when, once you get further into the game, it becomes a lot more about switching items for better defense and attack. We have like a Pokemon battle system, um, which is uh, magic, bludgeon, blade, uh, against cloth, uh, metal, and hide. Um, so yeah, uh, you, you basically, when you come across a beast, you want to gear up um, to, to have the best effect on them. Um, and yeah, it's really about adapting your stats to survive in the situation. So uh, we, we, we've been trying to gauge and balance the stats as, as people have been playing. We think we've, um, we're getting towards a nice sweet spot. Um, so yeah, we, we're not really sure at the moment, like the perfect stat strategy. Um, and then, yeah, just a bonus as well. Um, the, once you get to Greatness 20, you also get a prefix. Um, so you can see, like, Vengeance Royal Crown there. Uh, and if you come up against a beast with the same prefixes, you get a super bonus. Um, and that's something really just, just a bit more fun as well throughout the game. Um, so, yeah, next slide, please. Um, one, so talking about more updates of, uh, from... Uh, the last kind of time we, we, we spoke about Live Survivor. So uh, one of the key things um, that I've just kind of uh, posted a, a clip from uh, Loot Hero is that we added um, jewelry abilities to kind of uh, stretch out the strategy a bit more. Um, so late game, we've now added a bunch of different bonuses that each of the jewelry items will give if you get them to, to Greatness 20. Um, so yeah, just to pick a few, like the necklace, um, you get a, a more of a double name bonus damage. Um, 
pendant times two critical damages, um, etc. So the, I won't go through them all, but there's obviously a lot more there to to think about when you're playing. Um, so that's one of the changes we made. We have now fully implemented arcade accounts. So um, now recently, if you spin up an arcade account, you will have two transactions to sign. The first one is to send some ETH over to preload your arcade account. And then you'll get a second pop-up to basically set the permissions. And what those permissions are doing is basically um, narrowing uh, anything the arcade account can do to only play Loot Survivor or send you uh, back your ETH. Um, so that's fully up and running now. And it's cool because we're storing the keys in the browser and it's allowing signerless transactions. And, you know, um, we, we're fully aware that because your keys in the browser, that it's a bit less secure. But because we have this account abstraction layer in the, in the arcade account, it becomes a lot more safe. Um, so yeah, while it's also you're playing, any lords you earn um, will be transferred directly to the master account. Um, so your original kind of um, Argent or Bravos wallet. Uh, and we now support top-ups. So um, whenever you run out of gas in that arcade account, you can always now just top it up um, and keep playing with it. Um, so yeah, other enhancements, uh, as Rochelle was saying, we support optimistic updates now. Um, that really makes the uh, UI uh, synchronize with, with gameplay, so you, there is kind of uh, minimal waiting now for, for any transaction and seeing an update on the client. Um, we can, we're, we're now displaying any errors that we get, which we hope are minimalized, but we can now um, display them easily to the user um, for debugging uh, in a notification. We've got obviously the penalty counter, which helps with um, navigating our entropy system. So we have this idle death penalty. Um, now you can get a clearer view at the top how long you have until your next attack or explore. Um, we support now single screen item switches. So there's an example there. Instead of having to go to the inventory and um, switch your items, you can now just do it straight through your adventure card, which is nice. Um, and then, yeah, really just we've, we've also done various gameplay and difficulty adjustments based on the feedback we've had. Um, yeah, so just a shout out really to uh, our community as a whole. Um, for, for helping us on the journey of Loot Survivor and um, debugging and helping us fix things. Um, just wanted to mention one notable um, thing of that, which was um, Balthazar, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, created a bot basically to, to simulate, uh, simulate games and find op optimal strategies, um, which really helped us uh, with with this kind of entropy system and making it as fair as possible to everyone, um, so yeah, it, it, we we encourage people to um, if if you're able to help with with something like this or just bug reporting or whatever, because we we feel like um, it it should be something that um, you guys will will have uh, some sort of reward um, or feel will we'll feel that we will have to reward some way. And yeah, sorry, the, the, the issue there is fully on GitHub as well um, for anyone who's interested in seeing that and actually using it as well to, to test. This is, uh, this is the second or third bot that Balthazar has created. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so um, more familiar with this one, but the, the previous one I think was more of a closed channel um but but yeah um yeah he's been he's been really good and really has been shaping the whole entropy system um to to deny bots so although he has created one it's in the favor of making the game fairer um which and, is really this, cool this is a really good time if anyone's got bot building skills or if anyone is is good at poking around looking for exploits um 
this is a really great moment to, to step forward and show off your skills. Uh, Balthazar has, has set the level pretty high, but we'd love to see other people, you know, looking looking to exploit it because when this is launched as a, a mutable arcade machine, there's no updating. Um, so this is a great time to, to get involved. And yeah, I think that, that um, as Distracted kind of hinted at, I think that the community, um, if a BIP was raised sort of retroactively to thank people who had uh, they either built bots that helped to improve the game before we go to mainnet or um, has found bugs and issues because they've spent time auditing the code. I think that we, uh, the developers and, and, and contributors and, and, and community members would, would support um, something retroactive to say thank you for those contributions. So yeah, and, and um, if you go to the next slide as well, um, j just to say uh, as well, for kind of um, from that fix, um, we, we also did some work on the, ba on, on the um, basis of it. So um, we have a, a miss to mainnet, which is basically uh, focusing on contract works, which from, from one example from Balzar is tightening up the entropy system, hardening the contracts. Um, any final optimizations? There's there's been a bu bunch of gas optimizations Loot Heroes made, where um, because the game is stored in one slot, storage slot, we're really at the the cheapest cost that an on-chain game could be, um, which is really cool. So um, just just keeping that as it is and make in making small improvements on that. Um, and finally, Randall would be something that. A, converse, a conversation that we are having very soon um, with Herodotus, which is um, for storage proofs. And essentially this would make the uh, entry system even more great and more random. So um, there's a lot more security to be had there. Um, yeah, so the reward distributions, um, as I said earlier, there's kind of going to be a schedule um, where uh, for, the, for the first week, uh, it would be uh, only players that receive the bounties, uh, sorry, re that receive the rewards from people playing. Um, until, well, uh, it would be the DAO until there is a certain XP reached um, for the players. And then it would be only players receiving it. And then gradually over the weeks, the DAO will be phased in to receiving the rewards. And then at the end of the, uh, I think it's going to be like an eight-week period, we will release... Uh, funds towards the front end provider. Um, so yeah, th this is going to be really cool. It it would mean, and it would incentivize people to, um, even if they're thinking about it now, to to start creating a front end for this game. Um, because uh, although we like this UI, we we don't want it be to be the only one, and we want people to have their own innovation in what they can do, client side with with the underlying game logic. Um, and we have something to say on that is that it's already you know people are already forking or looking extending this game or, or mixing and matching different um, projects with with Loot Survivor even in the front and south rounds aren't they? So there's yeah, it's like the Crips well, and this... Caverns um, models. Yeah. Well as well. So as well as this being like a headless game which other people can build. You know, new clients on top of which might have different styles, might have different tools, might have, you know, like uh, ways to enhance your your gameplay and your decision making. There's all sorts of things you could do, and it, it just helps to make the the con the contracts will always be there. The game will always be playable through the contracts. But if we have multiple clients because there are incentives for those people to build clients, then we've got a really interesting um, kind of proposition, and it's already something that you know, people are extending and forking to make new games. So the 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 first sort of Loot Survivor deployment is like a little piece of, of on-chain history before it's even made mainnet uh, because it's going to be the heart of so much innovation and development. Yeah, cool. Um, and then, yeah, so production indexer uh, we will have up. Um, I'm hoping to have it up probably within the next 48 hours um and this will really if if you've seen a bug in, in terms of like refreshing and 
the current index are taking a while to, to catch up, maybe a couple of minutes. Um, this production index will be strong enough to deal with the, the flow of a release. Um, so, so, you know, we're, we're, hand, we're, we're going to be fixing that, but also thinking forward to, to when this, this is uh, going through the release. Um, any final bugs that we have, obviously, we will flatten them out. Uh, and yeah, the builder bounties, um, we discussed already. That was the Valve for sale. Um, but anyone else who wants to, please get involved. Mm, yeah. Uh, so yeah, play testers. Um, just some, just some key points here. Just, just in case, like it, it helps or anything. Um, we, we obviously, what what you guys are doing anyway is cool. But um, there are some links here that also help. Um, with any problems that you might come across, um, I discussed that we'll be improving the index. Uh, the it, what what might be quite cool and important is to be able to actually know where your keys are stored on the browser for your arcade accounts. So if you're on a browser, you can just go and follow those steps and um, you'll be able to see kind of your keys stored there. Um, I think it's important to kind of let, make people aware of that. Um, but yeah, we have that account abstraction security layer on them anyway. Um, so yeah, the final slide. Which is an... Yeah, I, th I think I went over the 10 minute mark, so um, just to shout out also to Odin, so hopefully we'll all be sitting at the, at the end of the release and thinking, GM, I just want to sit here and loot Survivor. I love the way that, that he's made the sentence fit the, the word, the letter count on the screen. Like there's there's yeah. nothing wasted in that message, it's perfect. Yeah, and I think also the message on the Nokia is like, um, we we also want Loot Survivor to be a game that can be playable on something like a Nokia. Um, so yeah, uh, although the client at the moment is is quite um, simple, we want it. We we think it's quite clicky, and we want people to keep coming back. And like a Nokia, it it can it can work on on most devices. Cool. Well, that that was a really good update. Thank you. Um, I know that uh, in the in coming weeks, um, we'll be talking a lot about Loot Survivor around the, the time of its launch and things. Um, Loot Hero is on the call. Did you want to say anything, Loot Hero? Mm, no, I think that was a really good overview. And yeah, we're just kind of in that last phase trying to shift to mainnet. I think that with a game like Loot Survivor, in a way, the stakes are lower than a normal project because we're not releasing a high value NFT. So we don't have like a contract that's going to secure lots of money. So if it does get hacked or there's an exploit, there's not risk of user funds really. Even with the lords that go into the machine, the way it's constructed now, they immediately flow out. So at no point is there anything of value in the game itself. But you know, our hope is that what we release is a long-term durable game. And I think that's where the community has been really essential in coming together from play testing, bot testing, right, all of the different aspects. Because I think the, the ideal outcome here is that Loot Survivor is just a durable game, just like Donkey Kong is or something. So yeah, it's not like in the first few weeks like there's nothing that like goes to the moon with loot survivor it's just like an arcade machine right but i think a successful outcome would be that people are still playing this game in like 10 years right not speculating on it but just like there's this high score that's been set over the last 10 years and there's some people that still look at it and think maybe i can beat it right and for just a few bucks they throw it in the machine and they give it a try and I know I referenced the Donkey Kong high score quite a bit, but I, I do think it's it's worth looking at and just reflecting on the fact that people have been competing for the Donkey Kong arcade high score for 40 years now. And people continue to break it, you know, as of, I think, last year or a few years ago, someone broke it again. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's, that's really what we're after. So while there's 
technically like should be low pressure in terms of if there's a bug, well, we could just release another immutable one. Um, but I think with the support we have right now and the amount of hours we have on it, I feel confident that we can release something that like just it has that OG status in terms of we released it. It doesn't do everything. Like there's a lot of good feature requests out there and a lot of opportunity for other people to build around. But in terms of this doing what it's designed to do in terms of a short, fun, fair experience, um, I'm excited to see us see us pull that off as a group. So yeah, that's it for me. Nice. Well, um, just a few more topics just to round off the call. It's been really, really good so far. Some wonderful presentations. Thank you, everyone. Um, so yeah, we are Dell, um, and we can all contribute to it. So uh, the councils cover off uh, kind of most of the activities of the Dell. There's a builder council. An arts council, literature council, coin council, a mysteries council, and operations council. <laughs> I think that's six. <laughs> There's a typo in the in the Discord. Oh well. Uh, so if you are interested or have a background or skill set, you know, in, in in any of these things, then please do just head to the uh, Discord and assign yourself the role by uh, clicking on the emoji of the council you want to join. And it's all incredibly helpful. So the Mysteries Council helps to amplify messages. And guys, it's so useful to have, you know, when you make a post on Twitter, uh, which is still like the, the main channel for, 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 for blockchain and for Web3 um, and for the developers, uh, just having a group of people jump on it and, and engage with it and share it and like it and comment on it makes such a big difference because it really dramatically influences the algorithm. And then shout out to people like Bulbhead who relentlessly pursue, you know, game Web3 game accounts uh, on uh, on Twitter and, and and post up, you know, our news and what what, what we've got coming up. Um, so uh, you know, and that's going to get more and more important as we go into um, like launching games onto to, to mainnet. We don't have a media budget. Even if you have a big media budget, you can't really do much with it to to reach Web3 audiences. So. Um, you know, Twitter is really key to us, so we appreciate help there. The Coin Council meets uh, on a weekly basis. Um, Loaf and Kalka are trying to get like a weekly session going where we talk about tokenomics and what the um, what the um, the DAO could be doing. Yeah. Um, oh, there go will, on, yeah. There will be one <laughs> next, next week. It's planned for Wednesday, but there will be an announcement in like, a day <laughs> let's go in the next 24 hours but yeah. yeah nice and then the art council at the moment is currently um been working through a project to evolve the um look and feel of the realms um autonomous world um from you know medieval to more of a multiverse fantasy landscape uh, you know uh, we are realms.world um which is the URL of, of, of the hub where the games are and, and eventually all the content will be in where we'll all be spending a lot of our time. Um, Realms World will be the home to many um, games with different styles, genres, technologies. And so we want to be able to, to for them to all feel at home inside of our, our, our ecosystem. So yeah, evolving the, um, the branding along at the moment and there's been some really wonderful contributions from the community on Steering that and really sort of wonderful ideas that are being incorporated into the into the creative process. Uh, so yeah, just to wrap up on that, it's the assign roles um, channel, and then you just click on a, an emoji, and then you immediately can write and we will receive tags for that channel. Um, and then yeah, uh, we have been. Uh, partnering with the Docs Everywhere community, which is a native um, StarkNet um, NFT project built on Brick. Um, so uh, we've been partnering together just because the two communities have, have, have a lot of overlap, and we spent, you know, um, a lot of time with the creator and artist. Uh, uh, I've been calling out Smith, but actually people are calling out something. Um, so it's enigmatic. I'm not sure what the right answer is. But um, we partnered up to to do three different um, activities with the, the, between the communities. The first one was a straightforward raffle 
um, to receive the king or queen duck. The second was this creative competition where we asked you to build a realms duck um, inspired by the realms using brick uh, to become the duck realms artist in residence. So your your duck could be minted and you'll receive a, a, a tribute in Lord Tokens. And so that was open for a week. And we received 39 uh, entries and they were wonderful. Uh, hopefully this will play. There won't be any audio, but um, you can see them all there. You can see Ploba, you can see the maps, you can see the Lord's token. Um, it's a pretty eccentric mix, for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, but really, really cool. And um, the voting uh, was over for 48 hours, and it was split between two communities, the Ducks community and the Rams community. And it ended up being a draw. Um, and so uh, with both on the same number of votes were these two ducks, Duck of the Banners and Game Duck. And uh, so we've decided to open it up to like a 24-hour head-to-head vote off. Again, it's in both of the discords and um, you need to kind of get going if you're gonna gonna participate in the vote. Uh, You've got 20 hours or so left. But yeah, Duck of the Banners versus um, Game Duck, aka Mario Duck. Um, please vote. And yeah, thank you to all the people who participated, whether that was um, to create a duck or to like come along and share like, your votes and views. I think it's really awesome to see so much creativity in the community. And then just to finish, um, we are gearing up for Istanbul. We, we kind of have in mind that, uh, or we know, believe that um, that the autonomous world and on-chain, community, on-chain gaming community are going to be showing up in Istanbul in a pretty big way in November, mid-November. There's a StartNet CC event. There's an autonomous world assembly, which is part of the ETH DevConnect. Um, there is a hacker house. There's a start in a hacker house and then a hacker house run by Komarebe, which if you're a developer, I think would be excellent to go and um, and join. Um, it's a really good experience that, 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 they, that they put on for the hackers. And they also bring lots of great minds into the house and have a lot of networking through talks and seminars and things. So it's really cool. Worth applying to either go along as a hacker or to, to go to the talks if you're building in this space. But yeah, if you're a realm lord and you are, you know, contributing to the DAO, or if you're a member and you just like the project and, and would like to come and meet some of the people who work on it, um, just yeah, go to Istanbul. Um, I know it sounds simple, but you know, it's not that easy for everyone. But like, if you can, um, Istanbul is, is a wonderful city. The events look to be, you know, very good, and we welcome the chance to meet you guys. I think that it's been like a uh, a rolling stone gathering moss every um conference we've gone to we've acquired you know a, another circle of, of contributors and friends of the dow um that have offered so much value uh, and continue to do so and some of you are on the call today so we met in that way so yeah that's istanbul um q a uh does anybody have any questions i know there's been like live questions running in the chat but does anyone have any other questions that would like to put the hand up and ask or to to uh, type now. And Loaf sends his apologies. He is uh, out with his partner on their birthday. So happy birthday, Mrs. Loaf. Um, I can't really, can't see anybody raising their hands. Oh yeah, I can. Whoops. No, oh, no requests. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. I think um, Credence is typing. Actually, we'll see if Credence has got. Is he? Is he got a joke? We've got a question. Um. If you are also thinking of going to Istanbul, <laughs> if you are thinking of going to Istanbul, reach out because there is a um, 
there's a group in the in the Discord sort of for, to help people plan where to stay and to share accommodation and things. We know roughly we have a quite a uh, specific area where we're kind of grouping, which is um, it's a big city. Getting around is difficult, and it's going to be quite cold. So you know, try and stay in walking distance of of the other lords and the events. So just reach out to me if you're thinking of going. All right, uh, Squiddy, Calc, anything else? All good, I think. I think we're done. Lovely. Oh, I, there's a Telegram group for Istanbul too. Okay, cool. There's other stuff. All right, guys, well, we'll wrap up there then. Um, have a wonderful day all. And thank you for those wonderful presentations today, guys. Really, really good.